Welcome to the Department of Applied Mathematics Commencement Ceremony. I'm Professor Keith Julian, Department Chair. Joining me today to host this virtual ceremony are members of the Applied Mathematics community. Dr. Anne Doherty, Associate Chair of the Department. Dr. William Kleiber, Graduate Program Chair. Dr. Brian Zaharatos, Director of the Professional Master's Program. And Applied Mathematics graduating student, PhD student, Dave Gunderman. Applied Mathematics graduating professional master's student, Annalise Lynch. Applied Mathematics Bachelor of Science student and College of Engineering and Applied Science Research Award recipient, Simon Julian. We are delighted to have this opportunity to share this occasion in this remote forum with family, friends, faculty and staff, and indeed our graduating class of 2021. As we recognize this year's graduating class, I would like us to focus on how resilient and how special they are. The final year of any of our degree programs is a challenging endeavor. Whether it be the scramble to lock down those final and critical theoretical results needed for a PhD's dissertation to come together, and needless to say, the writing of the dissertation itself. For our undergraduate and professional master's students, it may be the challenges performing well into those uh, final special topics courses selected to best match their future career aspirations. On top of all of this, graduating classes take on the adrenaline-filled and nervous task of transitioning into the next professional and social phases of their lives. These are all challenges of a normal final year. However, we all know this last academic year was not normal. To quote the best-selling author Steve Maraboli, life doesn't get any easier or more forgiving. We get stronger and more resilient. I believe it will be evident from this commencement that our, that our graduating students excelled in this pandemic era. This doesn't mean it has been easy. These challenges have required them to navigate many firsts in this virtual world. Performing academically, building community, and constructing a strong personal support system. It has taken the community to do this, so at this stage, I would like to extend our heartfelt appreciation to you, our students, but equally important to your extended family for the immense effort it has taken to bring you to this point. I would like to add, because of our students, the annual metrics measuring success for our applied math community remains robust. This year, our senior undergraduates, many of whom are double majors, earned many awards from the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences, just over 40% to be precise. These include the Outstanding Undergraduate of the College, the Research Awards, four of six, the Global Achievement Award, Academic Engagement Award, and the JEDI Award, Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. Through these war awards, we highlight the quality and diversity of talent that permeate throughout our undergraduate student body. Our graduate program also remains competitive. It, rem it remains ranked among the top strata of our nation's programs. This is largely due to the productivity and achievements of our graduate students. Every year, they are always part of the conversation when it comes to graduate research fellowship awards from agencies such as the National Science Foundation and the Department of Energy. As we recognize each of our students here today, we encourage you to view the full online ceremony and spend a moment recognizing the, and acknowledging each graduate student. Okay, so we now turn to the recognition of our graduating PhD students. Since the beginning of an independent applied mathematics unit at CU in 1989, we have graduated approximately 175 PhDs. These students are contributing significantly to society through their appointments in academia, the national laboratories, and the private sector. Professor William Kleiber will administer the recognition of our graduating PhD students. Hello, everyone. My name is Will Kleiber. I'm the graduate program chair in applied mathematics here at CU Boulder. On behalf of my faculty colleagues, I want to express how wonderful it is to interact with and be impacted by our bright, motivated applied math students. Today, we celebrate the culmination of their many years worth of determined effort. I am sorry that we are unable to celebrate in person together today. Without doubt, our students have been challenged in extraordinary ways this year. Our graduating students, their faculty advisors, families, and friends all know that finishing a graduate degree during an unprecedented pandemic is an incredible feat. 
I would like to give a special thanks to all the family, friends, and mentors who supported our students during this particularly difficult time. In the face of such adversity, we are immensely proud of our students, their conduct, grit, and persistence throughout this year. To our graduating PhDs, think of the incredible journey you've been on over the past five years. Most of you came to graduate school with a bachelor's degree, and note that about a third of the US population has one. You are now, five short years later, literally the world's leading expert in a focused part of the field of applied mathematics. You know the ins and outs and all the technical and delicate details better than anyone in the world, even your own advisor. I'm proud to describe a small sampling of the research that our graduating PhD students have contributed to the body of science. All now hold the Doctorate of Philosophy in Applied Mathematics. Dr. Osman Malik's work focused on developing methods to make sense of difficult and big data sets. He also worked in numerous exciting applications, including medical imaging, genetics, and engineering. Dr. Lewis Baker's dissertation investigated a method for inferring speeds of diffusing proteins on cellular surfaces from movies. By inferring when and by how much the speed of these proteins changes, one can draw deeper conclusions about how the protein interacts with its environment. Dr. Mina Yang's work consisted of using rounding error analysis to develop mixed precision block QR algorithms and to study the use of power iteration for graph clustering. She also studied some time-stepping methods for wave turbulence, and more recently worked on incorporating machine learning techniques for data assimilation. Dr. Joy Mueller's dissertation looked at modifications of a classical algorithm for segmenting images. In particular, she examined how random perturbations of an iterating curve affect the progress of the algorithm. She then incorporates the segmentation algorithm into a statistical learning framework that classifies objects. She also investigated finding stationary distributions of linear chemical reaction networks using perfect simulation. Dr. Fortino Garcia worked on numerical methods for two different wave type problems. The first was iterative methods for Helmholtz problems, useful for scattering and seismic applications. And the second has been collaborative work with colleagues at the Lawrence Livermore National Lab on methods for determining accurate logic gates on quantum computers. Dr. Eric Johnson's dissertation focused on determining how to compare two malaria parasites as sets of genes and how to estimate vaccine performance from imperfect data. He also pursued measuring resolution in medical images in regimes where normal techniques break down. Dr. Sabina Altus's research was concerned with resolving the influence of population structure characterized by age, size, or spatial distribution on growth dynamics with applications in cyanobacteria and the spread of infectious diseases, in particular COVID-19 in Colorado. We have nine graduating PhD students this spring and summer. Our Masters of Science students successfully completed two years of challenging advanced coursework and an intense three-hour qualifying exam or master's thesis. We celebrate 10 graduating master's students some of whom will continue on to pursue a PhD and others of whom will enter the workforce. Let me finish with this thought. When I talk to recruits who are thinking about graduate school, I tell them that this is a period of fierce personal and professional growth. I tell them that they become parts of many important communities that will, in a very real sense, affect and guide the rest of their careers. You are immediately a part of a cohort and part of a community of your peers, mentors, and advisors. As you grow through graduate school, you become one of a community of researchers and scientists working in parallel in the pursuit of knowledge. On behalf of my, applied, of my colleagues in applied mathematics at CU Boulder, we are so proud of the accomplishments that our graduates have made and are thankful for the opportunity to include them in our family. Indeed, our department is like a second home to our students, staff, and faculty. The friendships and relationships formed here last a lifetime. Please join me in congratulating our Applied Mathematics Doctorate of Philosophy and Masters of Science graduates. I am very happy now to introduce our graduate student speaker. Dr. David Gunderman 
developed novel computational techniques to increase the fidelity of physics simulations involving representations of complicated curved geometries with applications in aircraft design, cardiovascular simulation, and weather forecasting. David, in his spare time, also ran a number of our departmental weekly trivia and game nights in which grad students were sometimes joined by faculty. Thank you so much, David, for the tough trivia questions and your contributions to our community. It was truly a joy to have you in our program. Please welcome Dr. David Gunderman. Graduates and friends, it's an honor to speak to you all today. It's been a long road for many of us. I distinctly remember nearly six years ago on my first morning in Boulder. It was the first day of recruitment and I'd woken up late for the traditional recruitment weekend morning breakfast with all the prospective graduate students at the uh, Dushan Bay Tea House. I rushed out the door and uh, practically ran all the way across campus from the Best Western on Baseline and 28th all the way to the Tea House um, just northwest of campus, only to find that the Tea House breakfast was scheduled for the second day of recruitment, not the first. And uh, that anecdote is an apt analogy to me for getting a PhD. Um, always trying to catch up, uh, often ending up in the wrong place, and constantly feeling that everyone else knew what they were doing, and I didn't. Um, from taking the core classes, numerics, analysis, PDEs, and stats, to completing preliminary exams, and from finding a research advisor to finishing comprehensive exams, from pursuing summer internships, um, to writing and revising journal articles, and even from starting to look for postgraduate jobs to the dissertation defense. Um, I, and I suspect many of you, never once felt completely prepared for each next step on this journey, and most of us failed at least one of those steps. Now, this may seem to be a bit too negative for a graduation speech, um, but to be frank, any <laughs> rational observer would probably say that getting a PhD is a questionable idea at best. Um, after all, it's more stressful work for less pay with less average lifetime earnings. Um, PhD students are more than three times as likely to have symptoms of depression and anxiety than the general population, and uh, this has only been exacerbated by the pandemic. Um, unfortunately, only one in three current PhDs in math and computer science are in a tenure or tenure track position, and the rate is obviously much lower for newly minted PhDs. Um, so you may be wondering, what's the catch? How is he going to turn this around and put a positive spin on it? And the truth is that the benefits of the PhD in applied math are hard to see because they're not all tangible. The gain maturity, the new friendships and broaden network, uh, the research and teaching experiences, and the proof, perhaps as much to ourselves as to anyone else, uh, that we can truly do anything we put our minds to um, are the unquantifiable rewards. No, knowing that no matter what comes next, if you put your head down, push hard, and persist, um, you can make it through anything, and that is really a reward in and of itself. And to be honest, the realities of our situation aren't all bad. Um, <laughs> with excellent professors, we have access to an extensive network of collaborators in industry, national labs, and academia. Um, and this is evidenced by post-graduation jobs of recent PhD grads, um, some of whom are now working at Facebook, Apple, Lawrence Livermore, Sandia, um, and some have landed professorial jobs at Tufts, Rochester, uh, University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, and of course, we have many of our own here at CU Boulder. Now, our stories before we got here were varied. Among our graduating class, we have a former special education teacher, an Air Force instructor, a computer programmer, an English teacher, a UCLA PhD transfer student, a finance master's student, a biotech company employee, a pianist, a salsa dancer, a music buff, and many more. And we're still all those things, but we're also so much more now. Um, we're researchers, we're statisticians, we're computational mathematicians, we're experts in our fields, we're friends, and perhaps most obviously, we're now doctors. Um, so the world is open to us, and now it's only a question of deciding where to go next. To Sabina, Louis, Alec, Fortino, Eric, Osmond, Joy, Jeremy, and Mina, congratulations on graduating with a PhD in Applied Mathematics from C. Boulder. You earned it. We now turn to the recognition of our graduating professional master's students. 
This is a relatively new program for applied mathematics, only in its third year. Profe uh, program director, Dr. Brian Zaharatos, will preside over the recognition. Welcome, everyone. My name is Brian Zaharatos, and I'm the director of the Professional Master's Program in Applied Mathematics here at the University of Colorado in Boulder. And it's really an honor to be here with you today, albeit virtually, to celebrate our graduating class of 2021. Now this year is particularly exciting because we have our largest graduating class of professional master's students completing their degrees and setting forth into the working world. Now our professional master's program began in the fall of 2018 and our inaugural class in 2018 was just four students. And so we're so proud to have grown the program to include our 16 graduates this year. Our professional master's students are broad in their areas of study. Our students take courses in mathematical biology, mathematical finance, numerical analysis, mathematical modeling and differential equations, analysis, and other subdisciplines of applied mathematics. Students also take courses in adjacent fields, such as computer science and business, and other areas of science and engineering, in order to complement their skills and learn so-called domain areas. But the majority of our students uh, focus their work in statistics and data science, preparing themselves to make an impact in myriad application areas that are inundated with data. Now, statistics is a field that's close to my heart. It's a field that's at once intensely theoretical but also so practical that we can hardly go through a single day without feeling the impact of statistical analyses. Statisticians model the spread of infectious diseases and help rigorously design and analyze experiments on vaccines. They predict the likelihood of the next wildland fire in Rocky Mountain National Park. They uncover the explanatory variables contributing to climate change. They predict the winner of the next election and audit the results of the one that just passed. All of these processes and so many more require sophisticated statistical techniques and skilled statisticians and data scientists to interpret their output. So anywhere researchers and practitioners need to provide an explanation or make a prediction based on uncertain data, statistics and statisticians have a role. Researchers and analysts are now able to collect vast and extremely detailed information about their objects of study. This so-called big data revolution means that individuals who can analyze and make decisions from data are more valuable than ever. But with big data come big challenges. And over the last decade or so, the methods and tools used to meet these challenges have been dubbed data science. Now these tools include statistics, but also computer science, database management, data engineering, knowledge of a particular domain, like a science or a business, and collaboration skills. Now our stat statistics and data science graduates are gaining important data science skills from both their applied math and statistics courses, uh, but also from their out of department sequence in, for example, computer science, electrical engineering, or business. Now we strive to provide our students with these theoretical tools along with concrete and practical experience. Our professional master's students have been thriving in foundational courses like Introduction to Mathematical Statistics, High Dimensional Probability Theory for Data Science, Measure Theory, and the Theory of Machine Learning. Now these courses provide the foundation for their applied work. And among our 16 graduates, most have put their statistics and data science skills to work in an internship, a part-time position, or a full-time position. In particular, while in the program, our professional master students have served in roles such as data scientist, software and senior software engineer, software developer, health and benefits analyst, and data analyst. Our students work at national labs, centers, and institutes, such as the National Center for Atmospheric Research, the Institute for Arctic and Alpine Research, the U.S. Geological Survey, and the National Institute for Standards and Technology. They also work in the energy sector, for example, at Excel Energy, and in industry at companies like Parsley Inc., 
CyberGRX, Cybersecurity Risk Management, Lockheed Martin, and others. These students have found meaningful ways to apply their skills that they've learned at CU to real problems at work. In addition to students holding jobs and internships, our students also work on a culminating experience project, which sometimes includes industry-sponsored or faculty-sponsored work. Applications of machine learning to genomics, predictive analytics in hockey, earthquake prediction, statistical learning techniques uh, simulating tropical cyclone precipitation fields, rainfall prediction, applying methods from topological data analysis to tumor imaging data. Our students are engaged in important problems and gaining real world experience. They should be really proud of this and we should be really proud of them. So now I'd like to turn it over to one of our professional master's students, Annalise Lynch, who will tell you a bit about her experience in the program. Hello, fellow Applied Math Buffs. I'm Annalise Lynch. It's an honor for me to speak today and represent the Applied Mathematics Department's professional master's program. I've learned that CU Boulder Applied Math is an outstanding department, and I'm fortunate to have been able to be a part of the Buff family. My years at CU Boulder have given me an opportunity to reflect deeply on a few things, and then I'd like to share them with you today. First, I'd like to speak about community. I grew up in a small Virginia town with cows across from the high school and a creek in my backyard. I had a career as a data engineer and traveled the world before coming to CU Boulder. I've discovered in my previous career that my peers and I are less stressed and happy and happiest when we find jobs that optimize our strengths and promote community and teamwork. These teams fill in the gaps and compensate for our weaknesses. The communities that we build can inform us of the strengths that we should cherish and nurture. I think a few good questions to wrap our heads around at this point in time could help us define our roles in our community better. For example, are you a relationship builder? a strategic thinker, an executor, or an influencer, but not the social media kind, like an influencer. I know many of my strengths center around relationship building and executing ideas. What are yours? And if you don't know, ask your community, like your family, friends, and your advisor. We can grow exponentially when we lean into each other. As a community, we have experienced one heck of a year. There is no model yet that can capture how COVID affected our grad school experience or what the after times will look like, or perhaps we will be writing the data model that captures how our lives were so deeply impacted. Our master's degree experience ended with the trauma of a mass shooting in a familiar grocery store, King Supers. Many of us may have known the store, the workers, or those who were senselessly murdered. This is the world we live in. And while we cannot solve this problem mathematically, we can always offer the most elegant solution of showing up and being there for one another. Showing up for one another binds us together in the same way math binds us together. So secondly, I would like to offer my thoughts on how mathematics is the binding element. Not only is it the binding element for us on this day, in this moment, but also the world we live in and how we can make sense of it. The reason and the way each of us came to CU Boulder to study applied math differs, but the binding element is the same. Numbers, how they relate, and what they can and cannot predict. But really, we are clairvoyant, don't tell anyone that we're not. Everything that exists in our physical world is rooted in mathematics, or even is mathematics. The internet surely proved to the contemporary that math is the universal key to everything and holding the key is both a privilege and a responsibility. The poet Muriel Rukeyser wrote, the universe is made of stories, not of atoms. Everyone has a story, what's yours? Why did you pursue this degree? What did you give? What did you receive from this master's degree journey? I chose to pursue statistics because it's grounded in theory. It is specific yet broad, it's powerful, timeless, diverse, and creative in its own way. In exchange for this pursuit, I gave my time, my mind, and many hours of sleep. And I received tools, a broader vision, confidence, and community. 
While statistics tell a story about groups that can often describe and predict the individual behavior of people we have never met, Milestones such as graduation invite us to reflect on our own individual stories. What's yours? How did you get to this moment? Who helped you get here? We all have people to thank. Where are you going next? Industry? Are you an entrepreneur? Happily stay in put in the front range like me? Why did you come here to study applied mathematics? How has parts of your life view changed or not changed? What have you learned about the importance of community? And what have you learned about yourself? I've learned that underneath it all, I'm a relationship building machine learning engineer with some serious discipline, focus, and above all, just like each of you, I'm a statistic in this program that has made an impact by showing up. I've also learned that coming back to school after a 10 year hiatus is not easy is humbling and totally worth it. Before leaving the second theme of math as our binding element, I have to admit, another reason I chose statistics is because there's a creative aspect to it. It is the art of never having to say you're wrong. Finally, I would like to offer my thoughts on how we can go on to build our journey from this point onward. As master's graduates, we have shown that we are dedicated to learning and now we need to embrace that we will be forever learning. Every journey has a beginning, middle, and an end. So does this talk, I promise. I could say a lot about this that ranges from the predictable to artsy woo-woo, because I mean, we are in Boulder. I do believe though, that life is one freaking cool adventure. And since mathematics is the key to the world, heck to the universe, my next step is to conquer the world with machine learning algorithms. <laughs> This gives me a sense of purpose, keeps me engaged in my work. Part of the journey is finding what's engaging and finding the purpose. And this pursuit is part of what makes the journey so fulfilling. These past few years, I've also found my Colorado outdoor adventures especially fulfilling. I find myself waking up earlier than I do on a work day for these special journeys like running, hiking, mountain biking, road biking, skiing, climbing, slacklining, kayaking, or park chilling. Now with your mathematical key to the world in hand now, what would make you get up early like this to start your work day? And pardon if you feel like I've asked a lot of reflective questions today, in part because as mathematicians, we are asked to provide answers and to solve problems for others. But your own answer to your own personal and professional questions is perhaps the journey that matters most. So I'd like to end this final theme about journeys with the trailhead of all questions. I'd like to share with you the last line of Mary Oliver's poem, Summer Day. Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? So you wild and precious buffs, See y'all out there and rock on.
We now turn to the recognition of our Bachelor of Science, Master of Science students and Bachelor of Science students. This is the 31st gra graduating class of Applied Mathematics. We also have graduating students from our new Bachelor of Arts degree in Statistics and Data Sciences. Associate Chair Professor Anne Doherty will preside over the recognition. I'd like to echo the welcome that has already been extended to our graduates, their parents and other family members, and friends as we celebrate our graduates remotely but still together. The Applied Math degree program is challenging, rigorous, flexible, and interdisciplinary. And our Applied Math majors reflect these characteristics. Our students are persistent, flexible, and curious. And most of all, as they have demonstrated this past year, they are resilient. They were able to take exams, finish group projects, give final presentations, and complete their courses in our remote environment. And as they move into this next phase of their lives, they will need all of the curiosity and resilience that they have developed. Our students, soon to be alums, are curious about how mathematics can be used in the world around us. As part of the undergraduate major, each student took at least eight courses in a technical area that uses mathematics. These areas of emphasis range from engineering to computer science to statistics, finance, economics. Many of our graduates will soon go to work in industry or the national labs. Others will go to graduate school. I'm always so impressed by the breadth and depth of their mastery. We truly have outstanding students. The graduation ceremony and introducing each student to you is a highlight of the academic year. We take great pride in our alums and the diversity of their activities. But while we were unable to be together this year, I would like to introduce each student to you through their individual slides. In addition to their coursework, some of our graduates worked as undergraduate course assistants where they helped their fellow students with office hours and homework, primarily through Zoom. Others have done research in a variety of areas, including network analysis, biostatistics and robotics, and some have even published papers in research journals. Our students have held a variety of internships in many fields, which reflects the widespread importance and applicability of applied math. And several have competed in the international math modeling contest. All of these activities have added to the depth of their educational experience and will provide a broad foundation as they move forward. I've been a faculty advisor for many years and get to know our graduates very well. Each year I am so impressed by their accomplishments and I'd just like to highlight a few of our students. We have four students graduating with the Bachelor of Arts in Statistics and Data Science. We welcomed our first students in Statistics and Data Science in the fall of 2018, just three years ago. And so these four graduating students are our vanguard. We also have 50 students graduating with the Bachelor of Science in Applied Mathematics. This is our second largest graduating class ever and indicates the growing importance of applied math in the world. This year, six of our graduating students received awards from the College of Engineering. Erica Landreth was recognized for academic engagement. Jenna Trost was recognized for both her academic engagement and her research. Ms. Michelle Lin received the Justice, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Award and also the Research Award. Jimmy Gamel and Simon Julian both received a Research Award. And finally, Emily Zudel received the Global Engagement Award and she was designated as the Outstanding Undergraduate for the College of Engineering. 
She was selected for her overall excellence in academics, research, and service. We have amazing students, and I've highlighted only a few of their many accomplishments. But I also want to emphasize the tremendous effort that each of these students has put in behind the scenes. They've each had to overcome their own obstacles, sickness, accidents, other issues, and now the COVID-19 pandemic. But through it all, they have had the support of you, their friends and family, and they have persevered and gotten stronger through this adversity. This is only the beginning of their life's journey, and I couldn't be more proud of them. Please join me in congratulating all of our new alumni. And now, it is my pleasure to introduce our undergraduate student speaker, Simon Julian. As I mentioned earlier, Simon received a research award from the College of Engineering. Simon is passionate about understanding and helping with climate change. He has done summer internships at the National Renewable Energy Lab, and his research focuses on power grid efficiencies. He has one published paper, two more submitted, and is working on a patent. In addition, Simon is active in the Engineering Honors Program and has personal interests in philosophy, soccer, and music. He is truly an exceptional student and person. Please join me in welcoming Simon Julian. Hello, I'm Simon. I'd like to start off by thanking everyone for joining and tuning in today to this virtual celebration. Although we weren't quite able to fully reunite together on the substantial accomplishment in our lives, I know I speak for all of us when I say that it feels amazing to know that a large portion of our sleepless nights are behind us. And on those late nights at 4 a.m., when our numerics code had more errors in it than it did six hours ago, I'm sure many of us asked ourselves the same question. A question that I thought would be fitting as we stand here as official APPM graduates to reflect on. Why did we do this? Over the past few weeks, and even more so over the past four years, I've been thinking critically about this question. I've landed on a phrase that, in my opinion, summarizes the baseload of our character that drew us to APPM. The mind that chooses to continue taking applied math courses well after calculus and DFEQ is one that is fueled by what I now call intent creativity. When I first started here at CU four years ago, I think I identified more as a soccer player than anything else. But there was a seedling in the back of my mind where I knew I was coming to college with the intent of, of fighting against the effects of climate change. Specifically, I've always been interested in renewable energy because I've seen it as a root cause or a root solution to the greenhouse gas emission issue. Oddly enough, when these interests, with these interests, I ended up studying applied math. Curious indeed. But somehow, I now find myself approaching my third scientific publication, alongside being the lead inventor on a provisional patent for a software control algorithm that will allow solar power plants to mimic the performance and therefore replace large-scale coal and natural gas power plants. In just a few weeks, I'll be pitching this software as a business startup concept to investors in order to bring this technology to the real world and help create a 100% renewable power grid. I know that my extracurricular accomplishments are not alone in this graduating class. I've heard some awesome work being done, spanning from space station virtual reality design to the statistical analysis of the intersection between physics and spirituality to natural disaster forecasting and beyond. Regardless of if we landed on a career path, are looking to pursue a graduate degree, or are just ready to live in the moment and bask in the lack of due dates in our life, one thing is for certain. When you talk to an applied mathematician, especially the ones we're celebrating today, about solving real world problems, you can see the spark of intent in their eyes. 
Now, for the other half of intent creativity that fuels an applied mathematician's mind is of course creativity. Many of you, like me, might be surprised to hear your name and creativity in the same sentence. I still remember the days in complex analysis when Dr. Ablitz would start drawing out the Riemann sheets on the chalkboard and eventually get to the point where he said, eh, I'm not an artist. But I actually believe we are artists. Painters use paint and paintbrushes to make their art. Singers use musical notes and lyrics. We just use modeling and simulation. But having chose applied math, we chose to make calculus, probability, algebra, and many more concepts, our paints and paintbrushes, so that we don't have to sacrifice or limit our creativity when we dream up a big solution to a real world problem. So the combination of these words, intent, creativity, I believe is the answer of why we did this. Our passion and intent is what has proven us to be indestructible and resilient. And the interest and curiosity that is blooming from our create creative minds is what will carry us into our future endeavors. I know intent creativity is not something that we developed here in our time at Applied Math, but instead is something that was characteristic to the type of personalities that were drawn into Applied Math. Therefore, I challenge us as we continue our journey into a new stage of our lives to embrace our intent creativity like a superpower. I challenge us to live, feel, and act with intent to improve, support, and rebuild the world around us. I challenge us to never lose sight of the color and beauty that we see in saving the world from some of its most daunting issues. I'm confident with the intent creativity powering the minds and hearts of the APPM undergraduate class of spring 21, we are going to make a real positive difference in our world. Thank you so much for listening and congrat congratulations, we did it.
On behalf of the Department of Applied Mathematics, I congratulate our new alumni, the graduating class of 2021. You are deserving of your accomplishment, and we know that you will shine the light on the path forward as we return to a new normal. We all know that applied mathematicians and stats and data scientists wear many hats in the real world, so we are truly excited to hear about the paths you blaze. We wish you well, we wish you success, we wish you happiness, stay healthy, thank you all. Congratulations to the class of 2021. Thank you. Thank you.